Hi everybody, hope you guys are having a great Poop Tip Tuesday. In today's video, we're going to go in depth on stomach ulcers. We will talk about what exactly are stomach ulcers, how do we diagnose them, what are the symptoms. We'll talk about what causes stomach ulcers and at the very end, I'll go over five ways you can prevent stomach ulcers and we'll discuss any questions you guys have live on today's Poop Tip Tuesday. Guys, let's go ahead and talk about poop. Hey guys. My name is Dr. Samir Islam. My passion is to give you tips and tricks to help out with your gut health. I grew up in a small town called Odessa, Texas. You may have known that from the movie Friday Night Lights or even the TV show. I did my undergrad at the University of Texas at Austin, no Longhorns, and I did my GI fellowship training at the Mayo Clinic. So guys, let's talk about poop. So what's up everyone? I hope you guys are having a great Tuesday. If you're joining me for the first time, my name is Dr. Islam and yes, I'm an actual poop doctor. My passion is to give you, yes you, the best tips and tricks to help out with your health from the top all the way down to your bottom. Every other Tuesday, I go live on the social media ch channels eh, to answer any questions you guys may have for me and to go in depth on one topic. If you can do me a favor, if you can let me know if you're watching this live or on the re replay, also, also let me know I can't speak today in the comments uh, where you guys are watching this video at as well. I'll love to hear where my audience is speaking from or where they're coming from as well. And if you have a live question for me, don't forget to comment down below where I can answer your questions on today's live Poop Tip Tuesday. Hope you guys are having a great Tuesday. So for those guys who, who have been with me for a while, we're doing a new format where I go on every other Tuesday to answer your questions. I'm hoping this will be a more in-depth Facebook Live and so you guys may have some questions for me as well. But in today's video, we will go all into stomach ulcers about what you need to know, what causes them, how do you diagnose them, what symptoms do they have, and five ways I recommend to help prevent any stomach ulcers. And once again, we'll answer any of your live questions as well. So what exactly are stomach ulcers? Stomach ulcers is actually inflammation in the stomach that over time can actually cause a lot of issues to occur. Actually, we can see this basically with an endoscopy. So symptoms alone cannot allow us to determine if you have an ulcer, nor can any other imaging tests that we do. The only way for us to know if you have an ulcer is actually physically take a look and see exactly what's going on. And in there, we can see what's called basically a cratering of your mucosa. Part of your stomach or your small intestine will be cratered and have a kind of a little spot in there that we can typically see with an ulcer. Now, very commonly, a lot of people tell me they think they have symptoms of an ulcer, and sometimes those symptoms may or may not be an ulcer. And the only way for us to really know this is for us to actually physically take a look and see what's going on. And sometimes seeing some biopsies as well. But some of the more common symptoms, symptoms of an ulcer include things like pain, nausea and vomiting, not feeling very good, you're getting very, very, very poor appetite. And over time, that can get worse as well. And typically the pain will be right up here, right above where your belly button is, kind of around where your chest is at. That is where your stomach is. And you can develop these ulcers inside both the stomach and in the small intestine. And sometimes this pain can get worse after eating. For some individuals, this pain can actually get better after eating as well. But the most common symptom is pain, nausea, vomiting, having a poor appetite. Now, in some individuals, if this ulcer does become big or severe, there is a chance of this ulcer causing bleeding as well. So sometimes you'll see black tarry stools as a very concerning warning sign that you have a bleeding ulcer that's there. Sometimes your blood count can be low as well. You can be what's called anemic. And we actually are losing blood from that ulcer that's there. And for some individuals, you actually may see frank blood as well. And that is something that can be a concern for a lot of our individuals, individuals as well. Now, what exactly causes stomach ulcers? So you'd be surprised about some of the things that can cause stomach ulcers that can be there. Certain medications are known to cause stomach ulcers, so things like Aleve, Naproxen, Advil, Motrin, Aspirin, these are things that can cause stomach ulcers. Sometimes infections in the stomach can cause stomach ulcers as well. There's a very common infection called H. pylori. H. pylori is actually one of the more common causes for you to have stomach ulcers as well. And there are different tests that we can check to see if you have this or not. 
For some individuals, sometimes lifestyle changes like drinking alcohol can cause ulcers, a lot of inflammation to occur. If you smoke, this can cause ulcers as well. And if you combine all that together, you take anti-inflammatory medications, you have an infection, you smoke and you drink, you are setting yourself up to develop really bad ulcers and gastritis as well. And these are very common reasons to develop ulcers. What is not a common reason to see an ulcer is actually stress. A lot of people tell me, hey, their stress is causing them to develop an ulcer. And we actually have no evidence that stress can cause ulcers. Now, stress can cause symptoms of ulcers to make you feel like you have it. It can make you have symptoms of pain, make you have symptoms of not feeling good. But stress typically does not cause ulcers, especially if you have just normal stress over, you know, from whatever is going on in the world. Very calmly, it can make symptoms of ulcers feel like you have that but it does not actually cause an ulcer to form as well. Nicole, it's good seeing you. Thank you for watching on the live stream. And Isaiah, thank you for watching on the live stream as well. And if you're joining for the first time, don't forget to let me know if you're watching this live or on the replay. And also let me know where you're watching this as well. So question number three, hey, Dr. Islam, what can I do today to help prevent stomach ulcers? And there are basically five things I recommend for you to do today, today to help uh, minimize or decrease those risks of developing stomach ulcers. Number one is that if you are taking medications that can lead you to have an ulcer, like Aleve, Naproxen, Advil, Motrin, Aspirin, and you take that at very high doses on a consistent basis, you are setting yourself up to develop an ulcer. So try to find an alternative medication to help control those ulcers as well, whether it's Tylenol or things like that. Number two, if you are on a blood thinner, let's say you're on a medication like, like Plavix or some sort of blood thinner for a heart disease or a stroke or a blood clot, make sure you take an acid medication on top of that because those blood thinners can also thin out the lining of your stomach to make it more likely for you to develop an ulcer as well. Number three, if you're drinking alcohol, I gotta tell you, alcohol is, does nothing good for your gut. It ruins your liver, it ruins your pancreas, it ruins your brain, and it destroys your GI tract as well. So if you're drinking alcohol and you're worried about an ulcer, make sure you minimize that and stop that as well. If you're smoking, I mean, come on guys, this is 2021, there's no reason to smoke. And if you're smoking, this causes the blood vessels in your stomach and everywhere else inside your body to become narrowed, full of plaques, sometimes full of clots as well. And that can make it more likely for you to develop an ulcer as well. And then lastly, if you're worried, come see a G do GI doctor like me. We are here to help diagnose ulcers. We're here to help treat ulcers. And we are here to prevent ulcers from leading to long-term complications. So these are five things I recommend to help minimize or prevent ulcers. Stop anti-inflammatory medications. If you're taking a blood thinner, take a NASA medication. Stop drinking, stop smoking, and see one of us to see if we can help out with what's going on. Angela, thank you for watching the live stream. Michelle, thank you for watching from Ohio as well. Nicole, thank you for watching the live stream as well. And Shirley, thank you for watching from Trinidad as well. So these are basically all you have to know about ulcers. And I'll tell you very calmly, a lot of my patients tell me that they're worried about ulcers. And the only way for us to really know is for us to actually physically take a look and see what's going on. And with that, we're able to see if there's an ulcer that's there. But also, more importantly, we're able to see if there's not an ulcer because there are other reasons why you may be having your symptoms. Sometimes it could be gastritis, other things going on uh, as well. All right. Well, guys, that's all I have today on, on, on ulcers. I don't see a lot of questions on today's uh, Facebook and YouTube and Instagram Live. So unless you guys have any other questions going on, I think that may be it for tonight. Well, thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to smash that like button, like, share, and subscribe. And if you haven't already as well, don't forget to subscribe to a weekly newsletter so we can so you can get great tips and tricks like you're learning in this video. Oh, actually, Michelle, you have a good question here. What causes you to vomit up blood? Well, Michelle, it's a great question. And there are a lot of different ways, a lot of different reasons why you can vomit blood. So number one, we have to, it could be an ulcer. I mean, frankly, an ulcer is a reason why you can vomit blood. Number two, if you have inflammation going on inside your esophagus, that can cause you to vomit blood as well, as well, whether it's esophagitis or things like that. Some people can develop a small little tear from vomiting so much that can cause you to have um, blood uh, as well. 
And, and lastly, you know, you could be having something bad growing inside that stomach. So what I would encourage you, if you're worried about vomiting blood, or if you are, you need to get that val evaluated immediately. This is something that should not be held upon. You should not, should not ignore it. And this certainly doesn't need further investigation to see exactly what's going on. Great question. So, um, Nicole, you're asking about what about a gallbladder? So exactly, tell me exactly what you mean. I'm not sure what you mean by that. And Bilal, good question. Is there any way to completely get rid of IBS? This is a very good question. So what I tell my patients is that IBS, unfortunately, is a very chronic disease. It's like having high blood pressure or low thyroid. It is a disease that's typically there all the time. Now, there are periods when you have ups and downs, ups and downs, and our goal is to maximize the periods when you're not flaring and to minimize the number of flares that you have. A lot of it really depends on what type of IBS that you have, the cause for it, um, whether it's related to food, stress, or things like that. And this is why I have found using kind of a multifaceted approach, whether it's involving myself, nutritionists, sometimes therapists, using cognitive behavioral therapy, stress reduction, food choices. This can really help to figure out what the true cause is for your IBS, because for the vast majority of people, it is multifactorial. There's a lot of different causes uh, going on. And sometimes addressing each of one of these causes will allow us to helpfully minimize some of the issues that you're having with your IBS. Good question. All right. So Nicole, good question. So you're talking about your gallbladder. You're producing too much acid. How can I fix that? Well, the big question I would ask you is, how do you know that? Because very commonly, what we think may be gallbladder issues actually is not. And I think a lot of us just make a lot. In fact, a lot of physicians, unfortunately, blame the gallbladder for a lot of problems when, in fact, it may not be your gallbladder. And this is why it's very important for us to not to be overzealous about getting your gallbladder removed or to be overzealous about treating your gallbladder because it may not be the cause for what is going on. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, sometimes we'll use medication to help treat what's called bile acid reflux in which you have too much bile inside your stomach. Now, there are medications for that. Sometimes dietary changes like increasing fiber uh, can help out as well. And so I would tell you that it, we have to be very careful about whether it may be your gallbladder or not because more often than not, I would, at least in my experience, at least for a lot of uh, GI doctors as well, it may not actually be your gallbladder. Maybe other reasons why you're having some of those issues as well. All right, perfect. All right. All right, guys. Well, I hope you guys have a great day. And I look forward to seeing you guys in about two weeks. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye, everybody.